you have an automatic success mechanism inside of you that will help you achieve your goals and live the life you want to live. Now, before you tune me out because you think that this is too woo-woo or too like new age law of attraction, hear me out because some of what I'm going to say does come straight from that feel. But some of what I'm going to say is going to feel very practical and it's going to feel very experimental and verifiable if you are prone to, okay, prove it, all right? So we're going to cover the work of actually four people. One of them is completely modern. It's actually my coach, Joseph Rodriguez. Uh, but we're also going to cover the work of Maxwell Maltz, who wrote Psycho-Cybernetics, Neville Goddard, who wrote Feeling is the Secret, and Napoleon Hill, who wrote Think and Grow Rich. And we're going to look at where they overlap on this idea of an automatic success mechanism. Now we're gonna start with Maxwell Maltz because he is the one that specifically in his language laid out this idea that we have this automatic creativity mechanism, that, that, that there is something inside our minds that can be trained to focus on something. And we, we focus it on positive positive outcomes that we wish to see in the world or that we believe are coming to us from the world, or we can focus on negative. So you, it can be an automatic failure mechanism, he says, in psychocybernetics, but it can also be an automatic success mechanism if you are intentional about that. And the way that you get intentional about that is through, through what he calls the theater of the mind. And what this is, is it's, it's basically a meditation technique. It's a meditation where you go inside, you quiet your mind, you, you behave like you, you, you let yourself uh, grow calm and shut down and you imagine, you imagine yourself inside this space, inside, you can think of it like a movie theater. And on the screen, there is a, a movie playing, but this isn't a movie that you can go buy a ticket to. This is a movie of you, of your life. And he says, you can imagine on that screen, whatever movie you would like to have happen in your life. Now, you, of course, you could imagine some crazy things. You could imagine some, uh, and, and, and right now we're just in your imagination. We're playing in your imagination. So you imagine from the first person perspective of actually being in there, like the, the, the movie camera is, is your eyeballs. Or you can imagine from the third person perspective where you see yourself uh, going through a scene that's played out. And you can imagine it from both perspectives. You can imagine it from all sorts of different perspectives. You can imagine it from the perspective of different people who are involved in your mental movie. But you go inside the theater of your mind and you say, what would I like to be true in my world? What would I like to to have become this reality. And you imagine it, and you imagine it vividly, and you imagine it vividly, repeatedly. You imagine it as if the movie is as realistic as possible, looking at all the finite details, all the, all, all the tiny details uh, that, that, that represent the reality that you are imagining in your head. And what you're doing is you are training yourself. You can actually shift your self-concept. If you have negative, let, let's get really practical. Let's say that you uh, are afraid to pick up the phone and call prospects for your business. Since a lot of what I, who I speak to uh, it, through my videos is are people that are in business. Let's say you are afraid to pick up the phone and you have this part of you that is apprehensive about this. Well, you can imagine in the theater of your mind, in this mental movie, going through the process of picking up the phone, calling someone, and having that call play out in an ideal fashion in the best way that you can imagine. Now, again, if this feels very woo-woo, uh, what you need to recognize is that this is applied in, in all sorts of areas. Um, even before Maltz wrote the book, and I think it was published first published in the 60s or perhaps the 1950s, even before he wrote the book, there were people that were applying this in basketball. And rather than actually practicing free throws, they were practicing in the theater of their mind, making these successful free throws. And what they found through this research is that practicing that process of making free throws and feeling it and feeling like you're inside the movie with all the real details, even perhaps the, the uh, opposing crowd screaming at you because they don't want you to make the shot, they want their home team to win. Imagining that scenario 
allowed you to perform better when you actually went out on the court and did it in real life, almost at the same level as actually practicing the free throws. And, and, uh, and you can do both. Like you can, you can, you can do both. You can lay in bed, imagining what you want to be real or going through, let's say something, some challenging situation that you have laid out in tomorrow's schedule. And you can, in the theater of your mind, imagine the best possible way that it can work out. And you are setting yourself up then. You're setting your automatic success mechanism up for that success that you desire. And he compared it to a heat-seeking missile. Um, or you can imagine like any, any guided propulsion system that's aiming for a target, it's aiming for a destination. It, it's going to use feedback from the environment and, and continually correct and correct. And, and that's what your automatic success mechanism is doing. That's what the, um, your, your subconscious or your unconscious mind is being trained to do. It's being trained to get you to that destination that you imagine as real inside your head before it before it's real out in the world. Now, uh, the really interesting thing is that this completely mirrors Neville Goddard. Now, Neville's Neville's work is is much more um, in the law of attraction space. Like if you imagine something, it just appears in your world. And I think that Maxwell Maltz does kind of tiptoe into that territory, but he stays away from it because he wants to focus on on things that are much more easily believable. He, and he actually says that in Psycho-Cybernetics. He says, it, like, if you had heard some of the stories that I've heard about the effectiveness of this, if you'd seen some of the things that I've seen about the effectiveness of this, you wouldn't believe me. So I'm going to focus on some very specific things and encourage you to try this. But what Neville Goddard does is he says um, that essentially you should go through that same process. You should get into a deep state, uh, what he calls a state akin to sleep. You should get into this deep relaxation state. You could call it meditation. It's very similar to meditation. It's very similar to hypnosis too. Um, the actual like hypnotic trance that a, hi a hypnotist will put you into or, or self-hypnosis hip self uh, will get you to. It's just this state of extreme openness and relaxation and uh, focused attention, but focused attention to to the point that, that everything else drops away. And he says... Uh, as much as you can imagine something as vividly real and feel it as vividly real, and he says, feeling is the secret. That's the name of one of his his top books. In fact, a book recommended by, by Gary Bensavinga, the copywriter. Um, as much as you can feel it as real and really uh, get into that state where it you are you, what you are imagining feels real, what you're doing is you're training your subconscious to like, and you're training the world in, and you're training God in Neville terms to give you what it is that you are imagining. So very similar practice, uh, a few different interpretations as far as what it's going to take to get it to you. Uh, but the, 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 the consistent thing that you need to recognize is that this is this is something that really the top minds in personal achievement, the people who have been followed for decades, who have been uh, you know continually rediscovered by high performers, and who the highest of high performers swear by as like their secret weapon, the book that changed my life, are recommending this practice that's that's very much this this idea of programming your automatic success mechanism. Now, I said I'd also include Napoleon Hill, and there's, there's, uh, there's a good reason here, because Napoleon Hill, in his Think and Grow Rich, like he, he definitely steps into the same territory. But there's one thing that he really emphasizes. He really emphasizes not just doing this for like, okay, here's what tomorrow's sales call should feel like, or here's what I hope that this public speaking engagement is going to go like, or here's what I hope this, this you know, my date on Friday night's going to look like. Napoleon Hill says you should focus your mind on one definite chief aim. That's his language, definite chief aim. And you should vividly focus on that definite chief aim, that goal that you have for yourself that's that one primary target that you're looking to hit. And continue to focus on it. And he has a number of different exercises in Think and Grow Rich and his other work. Continue to focus on your definite chief aim 
until you hit it, until you reach it, until you get to that destination that you have set for yourself out in the future. And what are you going to do in order to focus on that? Well, uh, my recommendation is uh, borrow a little bit from Maxwell Maltz, borrow a little bit from Neville Goddard, borrow a little bit from these meditation exercises uh, where you are essentially training yourself, training yourself emotionally, training yourself mentally, training yourself uh, from whatever the power is that, that does this work that leads to the fulfillment of these goals. Train yourself to focus on that one thing that you desire. Now, why do I also loop in my coach, Joseph Rodriguez? Well, we were actually talking about some of this stuff today. And actually, this is this is stuff that he's continued to push on me. This is stuff that he's actually growing very popular for on YouTube. Um, because when he works with high-performing entrepreneurs, uh, including yours truly, um, when he works with high-performing entrepreneurs, what he finds is that these are the things, like within... 12 months, 24 months, 36 months max, you can really start to gather the bare minimum like level of technical skill that you need to be successful in any field. But there's a big difference between the people who, who gain that skill and just kind of stagnate there and the people who then gain that skill and build on it and build on it and build on it and continue to grow for their entire life and their entire career and achieve really extraordinary things. And that big difference is that beyond that like mirror, like this is the skill that I'm going to apply, whether that's selling or marketing or business building or being a team leader or uh, whatever like uh, actual technical skill you do for clients or uh, whether that's some other type of skill that you do out in the world to make it a better place. What the people who really do have a giant impact on the world do is they focus on these 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 other like personal development elements that are much bigger than the technical skills those those let's say 36 months of skills that you can develop and really become proficient at at most jobs and they focus on these things and um and he said like it those people who then go on to create this bigger success. Like we were kind of laughing about this because we were we were debating whether, you know, Maxwell Maltz and his like insane practicality of like why this works because we were talking about changing the self-concept and usually you're not gonna do things that are inconsistent with your self-concept or going all the way to the other end of the spectrum like there's Neville Goddard and you're, you're shifting the vibration of the universe to give you uh, abundance and, and wealth and bring things into your life that you imagine because uh, the, the world is a reflection of who you are like on a spiritual level. Like we said it doesn't matter really. Like what we got to was it doesn't matter. Um, and what matters to these people who, who become the best of the best is really going through this process and saying, okay, I have a target, I'm gonna go for it. And it may just be confirmation bias, which is like a well-known, well-documented thing about how our minds work, that once we already believe something, and this is really, really applicable to politics, like once you already take a political position, you're gonna look for every bit of evidence that supports your political position. Uh, and what it doesn't matter like what side of the aisle you fall on or whatever, and this applies everywhere. This applies in the atheism versus uh, re religion debate. You're going to look for every bit of evidence that supports your perspective, and you're going to ignore every bit of evidence that supports anything else. It applies in in um, it applies in in every scientific field. Like scientists really have to be careful designing a uh, a, a, a an experiment to make sure that they're not putting their own biases into the experiment such that all that they're doing is gathering evidence that confirms their own belief and ignoring all the evidence to to the contrary and so we talked about like 
it could just be confirmation bias that makes this stuff work. Like if you spend every morning meditating on what you want your business to be and you set a definite chief aim uh, following Napoleon Hill's recommendation and like Joseph has recommended to me, you actually write it on a, on a note card and you stick it in your wallet. I actually have two of them now for, for my latest. One is in my wallet. One is sitting on my desk next to my computer. Like, it doesn't matter whether that's confirmation bias, whether that's some crazy mystical quantum reality where the universe shifts in your favor or some like spiritual truth or whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is if you go through these practices and you repeat these practices on a regular basis, in, in, at the very beginning of Psycho-Cybernetics, Maxwell Maltz suggests do it for at least 21 days. Try it for yourself. Come up with your own stories, your own crazy stories of what happens when you do this. It doesn't matter. What, what is the magical rule that makes this work? What matters is that if you focus, if you come up with images of what you want, if you set a definite chief aim for what you're looking for, what you're looking to achieve in life, and you go through that theater of the mind technique and really emphasize feeling really emphasize feeling what it's like to be in that future that you desire. Something is going to happen in your life that's going to point you towards that target and it's going to get you closer and closer and closer. And if you continue doing it and you continue like living your life and taking action and like pursuing that definite chief aim, pursuing your goals, these are going to be the things that are going to move you towards that goal. And one day you're going to wake up and you're going to say, wow, uh, it's here and I kind of only half understand how I got here and I guess it's time to start imagining what my next definite chief aim is. What next things I can imagine. What, what the next possibilities are for my life. What new success I want to direct my automatic success mechanism towards. And if you do that, like this is, I, just try it. Just try it. Sit down, come up with something that you really want. Don't make it like absurd. Like I, I could go into all sorts of absurd goals that you could come up with, but make it something that you believe that you could achieve within the next one to five years. Write it down. Really like get crystal clear on what you want. You could even suggest some of the steps that you're going to take to get there. Like mine has to do with, because it's, because it's a business goal and it's very specific to marketing. It has to do with traffic conversion and economics and a target for where I want my revenue to be. Yours can be whatever. Write it down. Put that someplace that it is available constantly for you to refer to and then start focusing on the theater of the mind technique or feeling of the wish fulfilled, where you really go inside uh, calmly in a state akin to sleep or deep relaxation, meditation, whatever, and you imagine what that future is like from the perspective of that future already being real. Like it's a movie that's taken of, of, of the future that has become real and feel what that's like. Feel what that's like. Feel what it's like that your definite chief aim is already fulfilled. Already. Then it's just a matter of like getting to that future that has already been laid out for you. And something is going to happen in your life if you do that consistently. And most likely that something is going to pull you, pull you into that future. It's going to pull you towards your definite chief aim. And that's what that something, whatever it is, like it may just be emotional motivation. Uh, it may be whatever it is. It's going to pull you towards that and pull the 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 necessary resources that you need to get that, whatever it is, into your awareness so that you can recognize it and say, hey, that's your confirmation bias. That's what I was looking for. That's what I needed. And now it's here in my life. That's what I was looking for. That's what I needed. And now it's here in my life. And you're going to recognize that. And you're going to pull those things in. You're going to pull those things in. And you're going to have what you need that carries you into that future that you have, have imagined into reality. That's a lot. 
Um, I'm going to include in the in the description to this video links to additional resources around Maxwell Maltz, Neville Goddard, Napoleon Hill, Joseph Joseph Rodriguez, um, and and you know books that sort of thing that I've gone through of all of theirs. Um, if you like this content, if you like this kind of content, make sure you click the like button to reinforce it for me and reinforce it for the YouTube algorithms, for for your Facebook algorithms, wherever this vi you're watching this video, right? Um, comment, share your experience, share your goals. I'm not necessarily asking you to share your definite chief aim, but perhaps if this is something that you've tried and has been successful for you and subscribe. If you're not yet a subscriber, make sure that you, you follow me so that you can get more content like this, uh, that will hopefully help you along on your automatic success journey. Now I am on a mission to help uh, entrepreneurs and other high achievers live a happier, healthier, more prosperous, and more impactful life, making the world a better place together through entrepreneurship, marketing, uh, copywriting, selling, business building, and more. Uh, I believe in ethical entrepreneurship and that we can create a better future together through marketing. Um, it, God forbid for people who hate marketing and sales, but uh, if you are selling an ethical product, it's actually in your best interest to do everything in your power, to connect with people, to tell them your story, to make your offer that's going to make their life better and the world better. And that's a lot of what I talk about at Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. And sometimes that involves how you can be the best possible you and how you can achieve your greatest goals and your greatest vision for your future as is the case with this video. Uh, you can also follow me at BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com. I write essays, uh, articles about marketing, copywriting, selling, business building, personal development, and more, as well as publish these video Fridays. If you sign up for the email there, you'll get all of it. Uh, so my name is Roy Fur. This has been a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets or Breakthrough Personal Development Secrets, I suppose. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you again in your next video. Talk to you soon. Bye.